Well, uh, Peter, thank you so much for helping my project. Could you say a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, I have been in US for the last 20 years and uh, I have been working primarily on the IT side and uh, my focus has been on the IT companies, growing them and implementing a lot of solutions for uh, uh, big uh, MNC companies like Exxon, Coca-Cola, all these big companies. We have been doing SAP implementations for them. So I run these companies. I own and run three companies together today. Mm, I'm CEO for all these organizations, apart from having offices in Mexico and India. Well, that sounds like that would keep you very busy. Oh, yeah, yeah. It has been quite busy for the last, at least during this pandemic, uh, I, I, I got to take a little break uh, during 2020 last year for three months because there was no movement at all in the market. But after that, it got, it got so busy that three months are taken away from me, you know? <laughs> yeah. I understand, yeah. It's like, uh, I imagine a lot of these companies um, kind of postponed or canceled projects and, and they're like, we need, to, we need to cut all expenses and try to understand what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. So there, are, there, are, there have been a lot of challenges, uh, but again, it is for good. The market is shifting towards a new way of getting the work done whether it is here or somewhere remote, it doesn't matter how to lower the cost and how to get the projects done. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really amazing. If you have an internet connection, you can pretty much use that to develop all sorts of skills. And then yes. once you have the skills, you can use that to find customers or employers. And it really doesn't matter where you are. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, have you heard of a project called Starlink? Starlink, yes, it is by uh, Elon Musk, right? Yes, right. I heard it. I heard it. And yeah. I have been following the news online and uh, uh, I'm amazed. See, his brain is too fast in getting things done. Uh, he thinks about it and he uh, lays out a plan and gets it implemented. Uh, I'm amazed. I mean, in the last, uh, at, at least I would say in the last two to three years, he kind of achieved a lot by acquiring few rockets from somewhere in Russia, getting them done and started launching them. So it's amazing. Yeah, whatever the program he has, it is amazing, yeah. Well, actually it's kind of funny. He tried to acquire some from Russia, but Russia refused to sell them to him. Yes, <laughs> okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, ultimately it'd probably be easier for me to build my own rockets. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, uh, you know, Starlink is going to provide high speed, low latency internet access globally. So, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a village in Africa or, you know, a, you know, yeah, internet. internet, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's uh, my son has been asking me to subscribe it because it is already available in the US. So he's asking me to subscribe uh, so that we can try it out at least and see how it works. Uh, I need to I need, I need to do that yeah, sometime. Yeah, it's only ninety nine dollars to uh, be put on the list. Uh, they haven't. I, I think you live very close to me, so they haven't uh, rolled out service in our area yet. But uh, they said oh. by later in this year they should have it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I understand the antennas uh, cost like a thousand dollars to make, but they only charge five hundred dollars to the customer. So it's kind <laughs> of like a, a loss leader type of situation going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, what are some of your hobbies? Well, I have been, I had some hobbies in the past. I used to play cricket, uh, like outdoor activities, but again, uh, lately, uh, much of my hobbies has been more of more focused towards my son, my kids. Uh, whatever they like, I'm, I'm, I have to just support them, you know. Uh, if they like, they have been more into Boy Scouts for almost like 10 years, so I supported them. Then they have been into Taekwondo, I supported them. Now, last two years, my elder son has been more into NASA side, uh, working on that uh, high school aeros aerospace program. So I had to literally sit down with him, work with him on few of the physics because I still have that knowledge on how the aerodynamics and physics work. So I kind of help him out to understand the concepts. But other than that, 
primarily other activities like working on my company, uh, laying out the plan to talk to the customers, uh, but not much of fun in the sense like movies, watching movies is the fun for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I completely uh, get you. I mean, uh, your children are like the the center of your your life, and everything yeah. you do it's about them, right? I mean, uh, like you said, all the activities they're on, you're you're supporting that, and then uh, surely as you're like working on these companies, you're thinking, oh, I got to pay for their college and their house yeah. and uh, everything else. And I um, had a very interesting uh, event happen today. I dropped off my youngest son at the airport uh, to go off to college. So now I'm like, wow. well, now he's gone. I have to figure out what my hobbies are. <laughs> well, you can increase your list a little bit more. <laughs> projects and everything, you know, or you get to finish a finish few of those projects because you got more time now. Exactly. But it's, it's also, um, you, you know, the children provide like uh that that group of people that you go hey look what i'm doing and you know they're like oh that's so exciting so i kind of need to get that again too <laughs> yeah 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 that's right need people to share it with yeah uh, so considering your son's uh a nasa high school aerospace scholar uh you must know that we're going to the moon in 2024. yes i do <laughs> yes, would I you do. would you believe um i you are um, a small group of people who know that. Uh, what, what is the question again? Can you repeat it? Oh, would you believe that uh, not that many people actually know that? Yes, not many people, they, know, they might know it, but they are still not able to believe it. That's the key. Okay, they might know it because recently NASA launched some rockets. So they are, they are getting this information but still they are not able to believe the fact that we are going to go there because it's been like 60 years, right? Or I would say, yeah, almost 55, 60 years, right? The last uh, time- Yes, last time was 1972. So right now you're looking at uh, 49 years. 49, yeah. Next year it is going to be 50 years, yeah. So because of the fact we left out without going to uh, uh, like space, like Mars or moon, it's been like so many years, people stopped believing in it. Uh, they, they started looking into YouTube, believe in many kind of hoax videos. Uh, so they still don't have a belief in it, but they're getting the news, news that, oh yeah, we are planning to go. Recently when Elon Musk announced that 2023 or 2024, his rocket is also going, right? So- yeah. 2023 there's a japanese uh billionaire uh okay. um yakuza miyazaki i i can i'm probably messing up his name like beyond recognition uh but uh he's planning to take um himself and a group of artists around the moon in 2023 on uh spacex's uh new spacecraft wow and even Jeff, Bejo, uh, Jeff Bejos are, is also planning for space travel or something like that, right? Uh, yes. Uh, he so has it is coming into reality now, you know, it is coming into reality. People started noticing that, yes, it is happening again, but it is just that it should happen once and people's belief will spike, you know? Yeah, and it's funny, it's been so long since we went that people doubt that we even went. Yeah. <laughs> That is true. Um, well, what do you think about us going back to the moon? Well, uh, so I, I came from India, okay. Now, back in India, uh, I visited over there, just like NASA, we have ISRO space station in uh, Bangalore. I visited that during my college days. And uh, I used to fascinate myself like, oh, uh, NASA is the biggest in the world. When would I visit it? Uh, what would they do? When is the next program? So this is back in 1990s I'm talking about. It was only 20 years after uh, I'm like, people went to moon at that time, right? Now, so I had the dream and uh, NASA always has been at the pinnacle of my dream saying that, okay, NASA will do something. 
Now I'm so excited uh, now, uh, like it is happening at least in my lifetime, you know, <laughs> it is happening now. And uh, many youngsters are getting opportunity to go up there. Uh, recently I saw one article, uh, like one of the Indian girl Chaudhary has an opportunity to go into the space to uh, uh, along with one of the team members. So all these news is making me so excited and overwhelmed at this point of time. I'm just not waiting myself. I'm like, uh, I, I'm, I'm just uh, uh, trying to know like how soon can we go there? You know, I want to see uh, is that you know I want to know more information about the space and everything. I've been fascinated about that. But uh, there's some people that question, you know, why are we paying so much to send astronauts to the moon when we have things like a pandemic and global climate change and poverty and hunger and, you know, just all these uh, issues down here on Earth. And I was wondering um, how you think about that uh, conversation. Well, in my perspective, it is not uh, living for today, right? It is like uh, looking forward, right? How we live in the future. If uh, that has not been thought through in the past, then we would not have this technology. Uh, like for example, there are law, uh, so this I kind of learned while I was working with my son for NASA. Uh, so there are many, many technologies that NASA has invented by spending taxpayers money or anything uh, back in 90s and 2000. At that time, dollar value was even more. And they spent like billions on it, inventing many technologies. Like today, we see uh, temperature predict beds. We, uh, we also see clean water. Uh, we see a lot of foods that can be stored for long enough. You know, these are all the technologies that were actually invented by NASA scientists back then. Now, eventually those techni uh, technologies have been rolled into the uh, people's lives that can make their lives better. Now, today we can, uh, there is no doubt that whatever the money that was spent back there, uh, it is making us live uh, a better life for years together. Now, no one is going to compensate for whatever the luxury we are getting today for a cheaper price because of their invention, right? And they are not even owning the patents for it. They're just giving away to the public because it is built by taxpayers' money. So whatever NASA does today by spending so millions of dollars, uh, I feel like from my side, I fully support that because without their invention, our life would have been more miserable. Yeah. And, you know, last time we went to the moon, it was very much a Russia-US uh, conflict type thing. And mm -hmm. um, the US uh, pretty much did everything by themselves. There weren't really any international partners. This time we're actually going with international partners like uh, Canada is sending one of their astronauts and that, um, first trip around the moon and Artemis II. Uh, Europe is building parts of the um, vehicle. Uh, and then, you know, so many people have signed this thing called the Artemis uh, Accords, which is an agreement uh, to cooperate in space. But China, um, you know, is also very interested in space. And we have a policy of, of not working with China with regards to space. Um, I was just wondering, um, you know, do you see uh, the space as being something that the U.S. and China can collaborate on and maybe build some deeper uh, bonds on? Or do you think um, there's something really deep about the conflict between uh, China and, and the U.S. that would make that not possible? Well, in my opinion, let's say regardless of which country is going to take whatever the direction they would like to, uh, in a way, it is good that every country is trying by their, themselves to go there because uh, any point of time uh, in our lives, when we are trying to do anything for the first time, collaborating with others and working together will definitely benefit because it's a knowledge sharing. Now, every country has got enough knowledge that they have to uh, evaluate what is the skill and strength they have and see to which pinnacle they can go forward for. Now that gives them enough confidence in the future so that they can start doing things by themselves instead of keep depending on other countries. So in a way, I definitely support uh, US initiative of doing things by themselves. 
But again, uh, collaborating with other countries might be if there are some kind of challenges in the space that need to be addressed in the future that requires uh, enough support or enough collaboration with other countries, definitely US should rethink about their strategy in collaborating with them. So for now, I, I totally support a US initiative of going forward by itself because we have been there already, we have done that. So now we are just trying to explore more and more in the similar space, which we really don't need to collaborate with anyone because we have enough strengths. Uh, but eventually I do agree that if there are any challenges that we find there, then we can share the challenges and address them collectively. I definitely, uh, definitely be a good idea. I mean, especially if there's a, ever a time where uh, the astronauts are at risk from uh, uh, some type of emergency and another country is able to help out and save that astronaut. I mean, that could be a kind of a good way to increase goodwill between the countries. Yes, yes. And, uh, and at this point of time, I think uh, even though US says or some other country is trying to uh, uh, plan by themselves to go up in the space, it doesn't mean that those countries are not willing to support other countries. They are still willing to support other countries, but it is it is just that they are taking a step back and now, okay, we all did this together in the past. Now let us try doing by ourselves so that we can understand more our strengths, you know? That, that's how I look at it. Yeah. And um, how far do you think humanity will be able to expand into the solar system during your lifetime? Well, I don't have a straight answer for that because I met one of my friends who was saying that uh, each seat uh, into the space is going to cost like 250K or 300K, at least to start with, right? 99% of the population is not going to afford that, going there. Okay. Uh, in my lifetime, maybe possibly another 30 or 40 years max, uh, maybe like top level, like three or 4% would, would be able to go there. But if uh, US, uh, just like they, the way they are doing right now, spending taxpayers money and doing a lot of inventions and bringing it back to the people so that it can benefit them in a similar way, if US government did, does something or private corporates does something like that, uh, then definitely uh, it is going to allow a lot of humanity to, to see the space in the near future. Now, one good part I see is when US said that, okay, they're they are trying to do by themselves instead of collaborating with others. Now inside US, there are many companies like Amazon, uh, Tesla, uh, Elon Musk, all of these people are also individually trying from them by themselves by investing billions of dollars into it. Now, because of this competition, internal competition, what happens is they will try to get the rates cheaper and cheaper, much cheaper that can be affordable by the regular user because they're not going to launch like two rockets or three rockets and send 200, 300 guys and sit there and relax because they want more and more people on the top. They want to do real estate business. They want to sell the products. They want to do a lot of uh, back and forth uh, exchange of the products from the space, right? So because business motive is involved in here, I see it can go much faster, but first we have to see how Elon Musk can succeed, you know? That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I know it's, it's I think once uh, the cost to launch gets cheap enough, uh, you'll see all these applications kind of yeah. expand out. I mean, one thing is, you know, we constantly talk about a power crisis, needing more and more power. And the interesting thing is, you know, the sun is producing um, uh, energy in all directions. Yeah. And if you were to create a sphere that had the same uh, diameter as Earth's orbit, and you looked at the surface area of that sphere versus the surface area, you know, the cross section of the Earth, the ratio between that's like one to 700 billion. So that means wow. that there's like, almost near infinite energy compared to what we're using uh, available from the sun. We just have to figure out how to capture it. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I, I still, uh, so there are actually, few of my friends are involved in uh, uh, producing or creating the IoT devices for the farmers, okay? Now, 
they are not using batteries for charging their devices. I would, they are set up in the farms somewhere. And uh, these are like acres together in California. And uh, there is no way that farmer can go and change the batteries every now and then, right? So they are solely depending on the solar energy. Now, he was having a chat with me one, one time. I'm like, we have several chats, but uh, in one of those chats, he was mentioning how much sun energy is available and why are we not using it for cars, for vehicles, or for kind of computers, for homes, why US government is not taking initiative to make electricity free so that uh, we can start using solar power just like that, you know, uh, instead of trying to keep on paying for the electricity bills. So again, there might be political things or there might be something, but definitely I want to see the world where there is so much solar energy available, why can't we use it, you know? Yeah, I mean, you could imagine having roofing tiles that um, are made Tesla. in such a way that they're just as cheap as roofing tiles now, but they-, they no, Tesla, could... I think Tesla already did that, right? Like roofing tiles, they invented- the Tesla roof. roof, yeah. And the thing though is, you know, that's like really expensive. Like uh, for, yeah. for my house, <laughs> that'd be like $70,000 to- oh, um, man put that on my house. I mean, what you want is, I mean, I think a roof cost of what, about $10,000 to replace about? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's about, if we can get the roof tiles for about the same cost, then yeah. Yeah. That's work. I mean, they say that, you know, if you take into account the, the price of the electricity that you're saving, that's actually cheaper over the course of the 30 years, but still that's, that's taking a lot of assumptions, you know? Yeah. See, there is a lot of cost involved in having the roof tiles. Uh, there is a maintenance cost. Uh, there might be like how much energy it generates. We don't know that. So there are a lot of gaps, ifs, and uh, uh, in this one. Mm, so we still, we, I think we are still not there. If that cost can be reduced, that can be more helpful, yeah, useful. And I was seeing that like MIT developed a polymer that um, you could expose it to light and then you um, run it through a catalyst and it would actually emit heat. And then you could reuse it again to expose the light to kind of capture this heat. So, you know, in some environments where it's like, uh, you know, uh, cold, uh, you could actually use this as a heating source, so. Oh, wow, amazing. Yeah. Um, so if it was safe and affordable, would you go to space? Of course. Oh, I would love to go there and see what's happening out there, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, you remember one thing, there is uh, one program opened by NASA in Houston. I believe you might have seen the article where they are setting up uh, mm, the whole 1700 acre studio, uh, which, uh, uh, which is like a replica for the Mars. And they are trying to invite mm, uh, volunteers to be part of that program so they have to be between 30 to 35 years so that they can evaluate them like by keeping them one year what are replicating the conditions of the mars i was like i shared that in my linkedin today and uh, i was so surprised and amazed actually uh, like how quickly the market is driving towards it or nasa is driving towards it you know uh, so i i wanted to go but i am not 35 anymore so I could not apply to that volunteering position, uh, but definitely if I had a chance, I would definitely go to space. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, we need to make a, a space themed uh, old age home uh, so that we could go to space when we retire. <laughs> I don't know even we, we will have that kind of energy to go there at that time. <laughs> yeah, because it's going into space, right? Uh, flying itself is like a tough for old guys. Now, going into space is much, much tougher. Uh, probably our kids might be able to do that. That's what I hope. But, you know, once you get into free fall and you're in orbit around the, the Earth, you know, I'd, it'd be a lot easier to kind of maneuver yourself uh, yeah, than, yeah. than here on Earth. Uh, would you consider immigrating to Mars? So that was an option. What is that? Would you consider uh, going on a one-way trip to Mars and living the, the rest of your life on Mars, a colony um, there. No, definitely along with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> I need some company, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Hundreds of people. 
you know, transplant entire communities, uh, you know, in, in one yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. So my kids might be, once they are out of college, I mean, like myself and my wife, we can go one way to Mars and see uh, how that works out. Well, that's pretty much all the questions I had. Did you have any questions or anything else that you wanted to add? Well, I just wanted to understand how did this interest you on a first note? Yeah, uh, so whenever I was younger, I was always interested in space, uh, space and computers. Uh, so my dad used to take me to Johnson Space Center here in Houston. And at that time, there wasn't Space Center Houston there. Then the campus was open. You would actually walk among the buildings, just like the people that work there do. No security checks or anything. It's mm. a completely different time. Um, I used to watch Star, Star Trek. Uh, my friends were into space. Um, but, you know, right when I was graduating from high school, going into college, the internet was taking off. I think the year I graduated from uh, high school, Amazon went public, uh, you know, Netscape went public. Uh, and so anything dealing with anybody who knew anything about computers at that time immediately got a job. And then that led to another job, another job, another job. Um, so, but, you know, with uh, SpaceX doing their thing and, um, you know, kind of, uh, the interest in computers uh, running out, uh, I um, got interested back in the space and started the North Houston Space Society. And then this project, um, basically, there's a guy at NASA who was counting down the days to the end of 2024, highlighting a NASA employee. And I got the idea of doing the same thing with everyday people. Uh, and so that, that kind of led to this project. Now, this is a very tough task. I'm amazed. Uh, the way you are putting your time together and talking to the people because I remember seeing movies where on the glass window they put up the number saying that okay countdown starts now 200 days to go 199 days to go but you are bringing that kind of uh, visibility into reality uh, by capturing the videos and this is like a you are you are creating uh, a separate timeline for this NASA uh, launch and this, uh, this like this is like a time capsule that can be opened and viewed any time in the future. You know, uh, I'm amazed uh, with your effort. I'm I'm very glad that I'm part of this uh, show for you, and I'm able to answer a few questions. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> I'm glad to have you here. And you know, that's what I like to tell people is that the audience for this hasn't even been born yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely a time capsule. It's gonna be funny, uh, you and I looking back at this interview 10, 15 years from now. Oh yeah, I'm like, it would be amazing because I keep uh, seeing in the movies, they look back at their videos in a similar way. Like I want to see this video sometime in the future when it launches, you know? <laughs> it, it will be something else. Well, thank you so much and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Oh, well, thank you and I enjoy talking to you. Thank you so much, Nathan. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.